Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Wednesday, January 27th. Uh, got a lot going on here this morning, so let's dive right into it. Uh, number one, we've got Jay Powell at uh, 2 o'clock with the FOMC announcement. And then at 2.30, we have the presser. Um, but front and center right now, we've got a pretty good sized uh, fade going on. Um, it's 7 o'clock as I start the video. And we've got uh, SPY down 3 quarters of a percent. We've got uh, the Q's flat. And we've got IWM down uh, 1 and 3 quarters percent. And really, uh, the thing of it is, after last night's Microsoft blowout and uh, subsequent uh, AMD had a good report, uh, I think almost everybody had a good report last night, uh, the Qs were up over 1%. And that held much of the night, but now they're fading it back to flat. And uh, uh, they're actually also fading uh, Microsoft. So remember what we, we say. It's, it's not the earnings, right? It's the reaction to the earnings. And it would be pretty bullish, actually, in my view, if uh, a company like Microsoft blows it out of the water and then they take that red you know the next day fade fade it a hundred percent and bring it back and with the rest of the market red as well that's pretty bearish and i gotta tell you this we know it we feel it we see it i mean this market is getting squirrely i mean there's bizarre stuff going on all around and if you remember a uh, um it wasn't even that long ago. It might have been on the weekend navigator where we were talking about um, uh, a possible leg higher with, you know, bizarre happenings all around us where logic doesn't make sense. And, you know, it just blasts higher. Well, maybe that maybe this is a counter argument to that. Um, and that wasn't a prediction. It was just a scenario. Um, we talked about also the reflation trade fading. And I was looking at a lot of charts last night. I mean, the Freeport McNamara's, um, other copper names, the airlines, the cruise ships, everything. I mean, every reopening, they're fading those pretty hard. And also, we talked about the ultra high flyers being vulnerable went through a lot of charts last night you know the zooms the pelotons the um where's my list here um roku um crowd crowdsource carvana you know all these have started rolling over and you know these are the very high valuation names uh while money has come into the fat man names, you know, we've, we've noted that they're so heavily weighted in the queues. You're not going to see zoom. You're not going to see, you know, Peloton and pins and, you know, they're not going to have any effect on the, on the broad market averages. So it's what you're seeing with the queues is basically just the fang names, right? So, we got to watch today real close. And so I'll point out the um, uh, pertinent levels here uh, so you can have them handy. I'm going to go through the indexes, the fat man names, and all the spider ETFs. So I'm going to try and talk quickly without a lot of commentary um, so we can get through it all in a reasonable amount of time. So let's dive into the charts. Spy two hour. Nice channel here. Uh, this gap was filled. So on the two hour chart, I would be keying off of the zone between 381 and 380. Below that, I think you come down to 378 and possibly lower. So on the two hour chart, longer time frames, 
381, 380. I would be looking for a first move to check this low that we had the other day. Here it is on the 30 minute chart, 381, 380. Down here to check this lower low if this breaks down, as long as 381 to 380 holds, you know, they saved it. Uh, that's the bottom line. Cues. Uh, I have the cues in the pre market at 328, which is right here. Below 328, I think you can, I think we come down to 326, and you really don't want to see uh, this 325 go. Let's look at it on the on the um, on the uh, 30 minute chart. So here we are. We're flirting with 328. If we lose 328, 326.50, write that down. 328, 326.50, 325, and then 323.50. Okay? 328, 326.50, 325, 323.50. Those are your support levels. And God help us. If we lose 323.50, because there's nobody home, look, you know, I would be, I would be targeting, I would be targeting, uh, uh, 317 if we lost, uh, 323. Uh, IWM, uh, already they've pulled the rug pre-market. It's flirting with this 210 level below, uh, 210. Actually, it's 209.50, excuse me. Below 209.50, I see 204. Here we are in the 30 minute chart. We are right down here, testing this level. 209.50, 207, 204. Those are the support levels that need to hold this morning to uh, you know, contain the damage in IWM. And, you know, IWM is loaded with those reflation trade names, you know, the value cyclical names. That's why it's been outperforming. But, you know, if the market turns against that, it can, can move fast to the downside. Facebook. Uh, they report tonight after the bell. They uh, had a good day yesterday. And I do want to point out, we opened at 278. We talked about buying the recapture of 280. If you did that, you were good for four bucks. That was a simple trade. And if you were on top of that or had your alarm set, that was, that was an easy trade. Now, if you just hung in it all day, you probably got frustrated, but it came right up to the next level we had at 284 and then backed off. Now, overnight, on the Microsoft news, this gapped higher. So, watch that gap. Anything above 284 keeps it bullish. But if today, you know, they were to break back down into this trading range, your target will be 280. I don't know if they do that with earnings after the bell or not. But uh, those are the technical levels. Apple, uh, as of yesterday's close, still in the box. I believe, I believe they popped it last night after hours. Watch to see how it opens. Whether it's inside the box or or above, but uh, your your toggle points are uh, right here. 141 and 145. Uh, they also report after the bell. Tesla uh, sitting here atop 880. Simple analysis. Holds 880, it's bullish. If it re enters this prior trading range, it's kind of bearish, right? They uh, report after the bell as well today. So Watch how that trades. It may just oscillate here. 
you know, until the print or, you know, if it drops down, you may have a nice intraday trade. But unless you're feeling, you know, very emboldened, I don't think you want to hold that through earnings. So, but, but you can, you can trade that the way you're comfortable. Microsoft, big pop after hours. I think it got up to 247, something like that. Your closing or, or your highs yesterday were at 234. Watch for a, a backfill if they aggressively fade this back to 234. I think you can be a buyer there. Of course, look at the market conditions. I mean, if everything is just going to hell in a handbasket, I don't think you need to step in right here, right now. But that is first support. 234 and then 230 below if uh, if they put the big, you know, super duper power fade on the market. Amazon um, uh, didn't do much of anything. Um, it, it too had a little pop after earnings. Uh, you know, in sympathy with Microsoft, it reports on February 2nd next week. 3340 is your pivot. 3340 below favors 3300, above favors uh, 3400. And I think we have those levels marked on the uh, daily chart. Google still in this box. Above 1930 is bullish. Your support level is 1880. I still like this setup, but uh, remember 75% of a stock's move or movement is dictated by the broader market. You could have the best stock in the world if you know, QQQ is being aggressively sold off. You can have the best stock in the world and it's not going to perform. It's going to be held back by market forces. So remember that while this is a great, a great setup, big bull flag, if for some reason or for any reason, no reason, they sell off the market, you got to modify your view of individual names based on the price action. And even though this is very bullish as it sits, you know, if they come back and sell it down and lose 1870 here, you know, it may come all the way back and fill this gap. So that's where you've got to, you know, put any uh, subjective views aside and trust your levels. If levels break, you either got to be out or you got to be short. And then you can get back long on the recapture when things settle down. Uh, Netflix has been weak after the, uh, you know, the big earnings pop. And I'll tell you what, everything is a caveat if, if they sell it down and they break this prior low of the last couple of days, which is, looks like about 550, um, yeah, about 554. You got a big gap to fill, people. Big gap to fill. And don't think that it can't happen because it can. So even though I've been bullish, nothing more bullish than a massive gap up. If they want to sell it off, this gap can fill. So getting short on a break of the prior low is the right trade so you can get short and then see you know what happens to the downside okay let's get into the spider ETFs we haven't gone through these for a while and I wanted to quickly run through them materials uh, this is the reflation trade and ramp and this is the fade what we've been talking about. 
I think really your go, no go line is 72. That's where the 50 lies. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. You know, you, could you take a short here at 73? Sure. But then you got support here at 72 in the 50. So I'm alarming 72. And if it breaks 72 to the downside, it's got some room to run. And then you can set a stop just above uh, if this, uh, if the material sector breaks down. <clears throat> Communications, this is basically a proxy for Google and Facebook at, you know, 44%. All things bullish, you know, you got a bull cross here, you got a rising RSI, you got a, a range breakout. Let's see, that is, uh, what is that? That's only 250. 250 on top of uh, 6750 is 70 so the measured move has been hit on this breakout can it go higher sure but with you know facebook is set to report google is set to report uh on the on february 2nd let's see what happens does this go higher or do we top out here and then roll back down to this open gap? So I don't think there's a trade to make here on this in the middle of no man's land. Uh, let's let these earnings play out and see what happens. Energy. Uh, divergent high. Notice price higher. Momentum lower. Divergent high. Pulled back to first support. If you're aggressive... And you see the opening, I think you're going to be short below 41. First stop is going to be the 50 at 39. And then you got the 200 right in below at 38. I think, I think if, if energy truly breaks down here and uh, along with the market, I think you could easily see. 38. Um, now, think about this. There's other ways to play as well. Uh, you've got XOP, right? Uh, the Exploration and Production ETF. Great, great, great trading vehicle. XLE is saddled with the baggage that ExxonMobil and Chevron are like 50% of this index. So, you can certainly put on trades on this index, even with with uh, you know those two big components being fifty percent. But they are not going to move like you know these these mid cap and small cap uh, drilling names. So if oil starts to fall apart, you're going to see XOP uh, fall a lot faster uh, than XLE. So I don't have that chart handy. I will take a look at it and uh, let you know what I think. Financials. Putting the fade on this pop. I've got a gap at 29.75 down to 29.25. And then you've got uh, the 50 coming in at 29. So this was the rising yields. And then this is the falling yields. So notice here also RSI at trend. PPO is already rolled over. I've got a little trend line here. I think this probably comes down uh, at least to fill the gap. That would check off a technical factor and also a little back test of the uh, 50. And then we'll have to take it from there. Uh, this isn't one that I really want to, you know, I'm not sitting here all motivated to short this one. But that is the technical setup. Sitting here atop the gap, uh, that's probably going to fill 
and you know come down here to uh, 29 to test the uh, 50. XLI, it's already at the 50. I've got this in a consolidation range between 86 and 90. So that's a $4, uh, uh, $4 wide range. If it loses 86, the measured move is 82. And that would accomplish filling this gap. Notice the massive void here. Uh, there's no volume over price support. So I like this, I like this one set up as a short if things start falling apart. And your toggle point, your pivot is 86, right? If they can hold 86, then they saved it. Maybe able to bounce it back up. But if they can't, and price moves into this void, I think at a minimum, you get a move down to 83 to test the top of the gap and uh, most likely go ahead and fill that gap down to, you know, 8150, 81. And then the last chance is the 200 at 80. So set yourself an alarm at 86. And, oh, I just want to remind you, Just because I'm giving you downside scenarios doesn't mean that there aren't bullish possibilities. I'm going through the downside scenarios because of where the market is right now and the fact that, you know, that they're fading good news, right? Um, fading good news is bearish. Just like the opposite. Prices go up on bad news or don't go down. That's bullish. But I just want to give you these downside scenarios and where to set your alarms. Because when the shit hits the fan, I'm not going to be able to get to you in time. Right? Um, so if you have your alarm set, you'll know. Like on this one. If it breaks 86, your target is 83 and then 81.50. So uh, probably the most important to look at because of market weighting and that tech, uh, you know, tech has been leading the market for so long is uh, the XLK in this nice channel. I'd be keying off of uh, 131, right? You're going to probably have to give up, you know, this pullback here. Hard to make a trade in this area but if they lose 131 then i think you got 137 and a test of the 50 right break down here out of the channel lose this prior shelf of support at 131 then down to 127 at the 50 and then you know if it breaks that level you know, then it's a whole new ball game to the downside. So really needs to hold 131 in my eyes to, you know, just keep it, keep it peachy. Staples. Uh, working and grinding inside this big triangle that I drew. Uh, came down to trend line support and has bounced. I don't think there's you know, a, a real compelling trade to make here. Uh, you may see XLP outperform, especially if they, you know, come out of the um, higher beta parts of the market and go for some safety. I would be, I'd be a buyer on a breakout of 67.50, but I'm not going to mess around in here, you know, inside the triangle for, for a couple bucks. I would buy the breakout and I would sell the breakdown. So, uh, set yourself an alarm at 65 and at 67.50 and then you can play the breakout long or the breakdown short and just let it thrash away in the meantime inside the triangle until we see which way it resolves. Utilities. 
uh, I had this triangle here. This proved to be a false breakout and it dropped down in inside again. So I think it, as long as it holds 6350, you could be long. Again, this may be a safety trade if things get uh, hairy in the next week or so. You may see some uh, money flock into uh, utilities. So I think 6350 is your line. Healthcare. Big rising wedge. Notice PPO. Bear cross. RSI at trend. Price doing well. I mean, it's holding the 8-day. It's hard to get too bearish with price above the 8-day. But if you were to lose the 20 and this lower part of the rising wedge, let's say at, uh, you know, this 117, 116 zone, then I think you got some downside velocity to come down here and, and check off the 50 at 113. And if that doesn't hold come all the way back to 109. So I think, I think, uh, you know, this 116.50 might be a good place to set an alarm and then we can fine tune it from there on, you know, is this thing going to hold or is it going to break down? I think if it loses the 20, which is at, let's just call it 116. If it loses 116, you can look for lower because once it loses the 20, you know, it's probably going to the 50, to be honest. Uh, the uh, consumer discretionary. Uh, Amazon is 25% of this. So kind of a proxy for this. But this has your Starbucks in it. All these names, including GameStop you know, that is going bananas. So that's accounted for a lot of this strength here. You know, a lot of the junk names have been popping on these short squeezes. Plus Amazon has woken up. But I've got a trend line off of the, off of the October lows. And I think right here, 165, excuse me, 166, 166 is a good level to alarm. And if you get a pull in the trend and things are starting to stabilize, that might be a nice long. If, if we try that and get stopped out, we got to immediately, you know, think lower. If this trend line fails, we drop below the pivot point. Then, of course, you've got the 50 pretty much nearby at 160, but then the, the uh, 200 doesn't come in until much lower. Next support would be around 155. So um, still a, you know, a strong chart. You've got the, uh, this consolidation and a breakout and go. So... Um, No immediate need to, you know, get too panicky about this one. Uh, looks good so far. So let's do a quick recap. Blowout earnings last night from Microsoft, along with all the other names doing relatively well. Why are they fading it, right? We got the FOMC at 2 o'clock. knowing that they're probably not going to do anything. It's all going to be about the market's receptivity to whatever Powell says. And we know that historically, doesn't matter what he says, the market doesn't like Jay Powell. On all these Fed days, it always seems like they fade it. And if they're already fading it, you know, what is Jay Powell thinking you know, what do I got to say at 2.30 to turn around this bloodbath? And I, I guarantee he thinks about that kind of stuff. 
But be ready for anything on that FOMC. And remember, the first move is usually fake. Um, so you got your levels for this morning. Pay attention to them. Uh, review your positions. I'm probably going to take down some risk this morning on on some of our uh, the positions that I've got out there on the tracker. So be ready for that. If I do anything, I'll let you know. Um, yeah. So we got to watch this closely. You know, with bullish sentiment on the moon and all this craziness in these pockets of the market, watch those high flyers. Watch the broad market, watch the reflation names that have been soggy, and watch the high flyers. Okay, the zooms and you know all the names, the bubble names, right? Watch those. There's a lot of air under them. I'm going to be scoping out the charts and letting you know what I see. Because those may go faster. And probably will go faster to the downside than the uh, rest of the market. So um, let's wrap it up there. Uh, if you're new to the channel and like the information this morning, please hit the subscribe button and the alarm bell to get everything I send out uh, on YouTube. And if you like, it'd be great if you jumped over to the show notes. You'll find links to the blog where, where there's a lot of... Uh, helpful articles, uh, technical articles, and, and articles on trading psychology to give you a hand, and also a place to register for all my content. And if you do that, you'll get an invite link to our uh, trading room. We'd be glad to have you there. We've got a dynamic group of aspiring traders that, I mean, a lot of camaraderie, a lot of trade ideas. Um, safe place, no criticism. Uh, it's pretty much always positive all the time, which is the environment that I like to operate in. So uh, do that and uh, we'd be glad to have you. So let's wrap it up. This has been Chris Bus with Traders Profit Compass. Have a good training morning. Keep your wits about you. Don't get knocked off center and have your trading plan right in front of you. Um, because in the face of Turbulent markets, if it gets that way today, it's nice to have something written down to bring you back into focus on what you want to do during the trading day. So have a good one, and I'll talk to you soon.